how to invest in Malaysia stock market or property for Malaysian medical professional. Now you could be a GP, you could be a pharmacist, you could be a specialist, you could be a surgeon, you could be a nurse. This exact video is for you. Now I should really title this video to be how to invest into healthcare stocks in Malaysia, but not necessarily healthcare companies that are listed in Malaysia. Now what do I mean by that? Now you know that when it comes to investing, if you're a Malaysian, you stay in Malaysia, you don't really need to use those platform, fancy platforms that are located outside of Malaysia to invest into a company that is publicly listed in Europe or even US. Most importantly, when I say that this is how you invest in company or stocks from Malaysia, but specifically into healthcare sector, because this video lesson is specifically made for medical professionals, you know, doctors, specialists, nurses, pharmacists, because this is your area of competency. When I talk about this company, you probably know more than me when it comes to what these companies are actually doing. Now, the first company that you want to look at is basically it's called United Health, right? And it is one of the largest healthcare companies in the world uh, with, uh, by revenue. And when I talk to these two, uh, my specialist doctor's clients, right? Just look at my WhatsApp conversation over here, right? When I talk, I actually inform him, hey, there are, this is, there are funds that, that is specifically invest into healthcare sector, right? And I don't have to talk a lot because as a doctor, as a medical professional, they know that very well, right? And then they just... Just like that, they say, all right, I, will, I know I will top up 10,000. You know, these are all the companies I know anyway. It's like, for example, they say one of the company, Amgen, we, we are going to cover in this video, have new drugs coming out. So when you have a new patented drugs or product coming out, and that is a good thing. The company revenue will rise and then your stock prices will eventually uh, rise as well, right? And they say United Healthcare is involved in the aid in US. So these doctors, you know, they know what is going on for them. This is just no brainer. And when you look at all these companies that I'm going to cover for you anyway, in this video, you say all seems a good company. The others are also established. As a medical professional, I think you deserve way better Better, that all those financial agents or bankers trying to hard sell you financial product without you as a very smart person knowing what is going on with your investment with your money and it pains me to see that a lot of our doctor clients when they first come to us they are like a you know a, a dog I mean I don't mean, mean to actually offend uh, if you're a doctor and whatnot but just imagine this analogy right if uh, a pet, right? A dog that has been abused, abused by its previous owners. So naturally, when you know you are actually afraid of human because you thought that you know people are going to beat you up, and that is the exact thing that has happened to a lot of uh, medical professional in Malaysia because all they actually encounter are very salesy, very pushy sales agent, maybe insurance agent. I have even heard a doctor client actually told me that within a week there are people who are actually not sick at all, but they, they just make an appointment, right? And uh, go to the GP clinic and, you know, just for that chance of seeing the doctor, you know, that disguise, bura bura, become a patient, just to say that, hey, doctor, I have this uh, saving plan or investment plan. Do you want to invest? Do you want to buy? So this is why doctors, especially uh, if you are just starting out, if you're a junior doctor, you know that unfortunately uh, the, the government doesn't pay you very well. And that actually prevent you from getting really good advice because you walk into the bank you know you probably can get good advice if you are in the private banking category but your net worth your income is not that high enough to qualify so when you're at that level you're a junior doctor maybe in the government uh, sector you just are relegated to you know all those uh, pushy sales agent that is actually swarming uh, around you and you really, I think you don't deserve that. You deserve more. You deserve, just like when you actually dispense good advice and treatment or prescription to your patients, uh, I'm here to tell you that you actually deserve more. You deserve proper good advice, just like the same way that you are actually treating your clients. The very reason, probably why you become a doctor in the first place. Uh, for example, you know, Pfizer as a company, do you know what, what they, this company does? Now, you know, company like Pfizer, what is they are most well-known for, right? It is the pill that is mostly associated with Japanese words like itai itai, yamate, and kimochi. Now, uh, I don't need the blue pill, you know, if Pfizer are actually uh, watching this, no, you don't need to sponsor me for that, I, I don't need that. Uh, somebody else might need that. Adults like me, uh, who are about 80 years old, quite incapable, that's all right. <laughs> I'm not confessing in it. <laughs> but wait until you reach 80, then you will know. <laughs> you know, we were born together, we grew up together, we played together, we enjoyed life together, we grew old together. But why must that thing die before me? <laughs> well, anyway, for me it is quite harmless looking at these things. You only have nostalgia. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wakes up at all, everything's dead. But on this topic, if you haven't noticed, Wang Mingzi on MV actually published a very entertaining, a very hot video where he actually filmed a music video with a Japanese AV star back in 2020 uh, on this topic. And you know, if, if you read and you understand Chinese, I really want you to check out this music video that is popping up in the upper right hand corner now. Not now, but after you watch 
this serious video lesson of mine finish and then you just go to watch that entertaining video so you decompress a bit like huh? other companies also like you know edwards life science uh, thermo fisher scientific now you could you could lightly in not a doctor not a surgeon or specialist but if you are actually you know in the medical sales industry and these are the probably some of the companies you actually recognize as well and the reason i do this video is it is not only because you know if you are a doctor and all that this is going to be very relatable to you now even if you are not i want you to actually learn something from this as in how the smartest people in the society normally they say doctors is one of the top three right and how those real doctors actually invest because as an independent uh, advisor you know we got a lot of doctor clients and they come for us for advice they are getting tired of all, all those sales talk and all that so they really want real advice just like they are giving good advice and treatment to the patients they will appreciate someone that can give them actionable and really good non-biased independent advice you know just like our, our independent advisor like myself cf liu and across all our channels you know every now and then i see there are, there are doctors that actually left a message when we actually post something and then they really feel it uh something like a comment like this they say unfortunately doctors are one of the most uh old underpaid right and most overworked and underappreciated now they can say about doctors being like you know especially if this pandemic doctors are the frontliners they are the very important people that you know every citizen uh, or rakyat cannot live without because they're such important as a frontline defense against all this pandemic but yet but yet at least in malaysia they are paid doesn't really actually reflect that and i'm not talking this this is not a baseless uh, kind of statement because uh, if you look at this this video uh, you can see what i, I actually uh, meant here how about a fair price for our consultation we are paid 10 ringgit i'm not a gatekeeper i'm a beggar at your gate any other professionals license of this the number of the criminal based on uh, salary when the economy is bad like when the economy is good everyone has their salary increment and the gp just it stays at the past and seven years they are all the same page, they are all here for the better foundations. But to look after my patients properly, I must be secure in my position. If I tell, you know, a 10 year old child, I give you 10 ringgit if you become a doctor, you don't think you'll be a doctor secure? They say, I, I think I'll be a better, a better. Doctor, equal doctor, TV in the private hospital can charge 1400 ringgit. And as I, in the practice outside, then I charge anything more than 25, I, I cause inflation. I, I don't understand this logic. Okay? And many a time, people not even charge consultation. And I can tell you, in my 35 years of British, no patient has ever been sent back because she or he could not pay. Oh boy, that gets out of hand. Um, sorry about that. So moving on, you can see this, this some of the companies like Boston Scientific and Abbott uh, lab, lab, which by the way it, is, it has a it is a plant or manufacturing plant or site in you know in Malaysia in Penang as well. Both of these companies are in Malaysia. I have a lot of uh, ex bosses, uh, ex managers, friends, colleagues, uh, you know, working in this in this company. Now this is a very famous one. You can see AstraZeneca is a British British uh, multinational pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical company, which is uh, HQ in England. And you see that these are billions, they are companies with billions of revenue. And then they also are ahead in terms of, you know, when uh, coming up with the vaccine uh, for COVID, uh, that, that, you know, there's still, I think there's still a lot of upside uh, going forward. Whether the vaccine is found or not, we don't know or how long it's going to take, but at least these companies are actually involved actively into finding this vaccine. And, you know, like they say, the, the first one, the first of the market always win and they dominate the market share, right? So a few of these companies are actually racing against time to come up with a vaccine. Now, if you were to actually invest conventionally uh, into just like, you know, one company, right? You know that, you know, it depends on whether you're is correct or not but if you pick it wrongly for example you thought this company is going to come up with the vaccine first but end up you know the r d actually fail so you could probably lose money you know when the company stock go down uh, but if you are actually investing like a cluster of pharmaceutical healthcare company basically doesn't really matter because you're investing in the entire sector itself a sector if you're a doctor a medical professional pharmacist this is exactly your area of competency and nobody can actually you know go rank you know or, or, or cheat you when it comes to what other things you're investing into because you know this industry this industry which is your bread and butter and you can see company like Roche, uh, probably they are not involved in the vaccine, but they are actually coming up before because antibody test, you know, when it comes to this medical line, uh, they say that the money is always made in, you know, on the, on the treatment or the vaccine or the drug kind of things. But there are some companies that I cover over here, they also do, you know, like the, the diagnostic tests or products or services and uh, sorts. Johnson & Johnson uh, needs no explanation, as you can see, uh, they announced the acceleration of COVID-19 vaccine candidate, right, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, most of us will know that about our Johnson & Johnson baby products, but no, because they also develop medical device, pharmaceutical, and you know what we know is uh, consumer uh, packaged goods, right, but they are considered pharmaceutical company. Uh, company like Sanofi is something that you could consider, and you know, they are actually involved in this, uh, the race against uh, this uh, COVID to get the vaccine as well. Uh, company like, you know, one of my clients mentioned, Mgen, uh, you know, why Mgen, Mgen shares actually jump today, da -da 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 -da. these are some of the latest news, right. Again, you, when you watch it, it might not this might be old news already but you know you know when it comes to this news it's just one google search away and company like Merck and Co. well you know these are some of the news uh, they are involved in probably in some of the vaccines or drugs as well
and that is how you really want to invest as a medical professional just focus on what you are doing and when you invest also play within your circle of competency now if you try to actually go out there and try to find info or what to invest you are going to uh, hear a lot of conflicting opinions or comments right all around social media all around the web i really super love uh, how mr money tv actually does this video good edit excellent edit compared to my fugly powerpoint presentation over here you know it's commercial worthy um, uh, th but the problem is, if you're a medical profession, if you're a busy doctor specialist, you have to differentiate between entertainment and actionable advice. Well, so, for, for, for example, if you can see, if you just by this page alone, if you were to actually uh, consume the content, they say, okay, top 10 dividend stock, top 3 oil and gas stocks in Malaysia, top 3 healthcare stocks in Malaysia, top 4 telco stocks in Malaysia, what, what are you going to focus on? Let me ask you, right? And let's just put that in your context. Do specialist doctors able to charge more and earn more, or is it the GP or general practitioner that earn more, given the same working hours and everything else being the same, you know, same number of patients? And I think the answer is obvious. You get better result by being a specialist, by focusing on within your area of competency. Because when it comes to investment, it's crazy, right? It's crazy to think that uh, you can actually be expert and invest, you know, into these different different sectors and still get good returns. It's the similar analogy. It's, it's crazy to think that you can be a cardiologist at the same time you, you are a neurosurgeon, at the same time you're also a skin specialist, at the same time you're also a gynae. At the same time, right? I have never known a medical professional who actually specialize in four areas. No. Right? You specialize in one area. That is the analogy that you, you already understand. I just want to actually put this into investing, right? And uh, when it comes to this context of investing, why I share with you all this global healthcare company? Because you know EPF, right? In, you know, in this news piece in, in mid of 2020, even EPF are actually looking overseas. They are venturing overseas to get higher gains. You know that EPF uh, are normally, you know, about 5, 5.5, 5, 5 or 6 percent. But, you know, in uh, 2019, it has been decreased a bit. So it's an EPF 6 to beat 4 to 5 percent return. How? by allocating more money overseas and you know that uh, uh it's not easy to actually do that even with platform like what overseas platform eToro and all that but just with, with just ten thousand right if you go into a like healthcare fund with just ten thousand you can actually divest into invest into all these companies that i just uh, covered for the past 10 minutes we are using the sector approach right that is how you actually play the play the big league game by being forward lo looking by really even if you have actually moving out of malaysia you know probably they see there's a limited upside in malaysia so when i see videos like this you, you, you know it's good video but then again when it comes to healthcare stock well you are just playing within malaysia so you need to think bigger and you know uh swim you know swim together with the big ball you play in the big league by right? being forward looking by being proactive uh, what, what I mean by that, you know, when when top glove, are you fucking kidding me or not? I mean, sorry for my words, but I could actually stress this point because I'm not monetizing my video, so I could use this these words without being demonetized. You know, when people say healthcare stock, they are only looking at top glove, and by the time actually you're looking at top glove already, it has already gone up. So you could be just okay. I'm now buying into top glove. You just might be uh, become a greater fool. And what I what, what I mean by that, meaning that you're buying it from someone who actually want to take profit fifty percent already. You know, buy from there and you hope it goes up. But then after that, you become a greater fool. Maybe it will go down, right? So instead of being reactive, okay, you must be proactive, right? This is how we actually allocate our client's portfolio outside of Malaysia, right? If you look at the big guys, even EPF. So how we actually do our cash investment for our client in Malaysia is basically they are diversified into, for example, sector allocation. These are all healthcare sector. But you know, for example, biotech, healthcare equipment, pharmaceutical, managed healthcare, life science, and two so but all are in healthcare sector and geographically they are diversified in the usa you know uk us would be the leader in a, a lot of things healthcare or pharmaceutical related right so but hey you know what if you have you have an advisor a real practitioner licensed and certified advisor advising you you wouldn't be so you know uh, what we call as narrow-minded or narrow focused on the, oh there's a healthcare stock in malaysia what can i buy you would actually think bigger you play together with the big guys in the big league just like your english premier league right even though you are small even though you are small but you are actually you know swimming together with the big sharks on your side you don't want to swim alone in the big sea you don't want to swim against the sharks because as, as a result of that you know it is really you are very prone to actually losing money and let me explain what is a greater fool theory right in finance and economics with the greater fool states that the price of an object is determined by not by its intrinsic value but rather by the local and related demand of the uh of the consumer or the buyer so you see top glove i think it probably has gone up too much already right maybe it's over i don't know i'm not actually discussing from a very investing standpoint in this video now, the, again, if you are watching CFU channel, but you are not watching a channel called Mr. Money TV, I will actually put a link in the description below or in the upper right-hand corner, right?
obviously a channel of Mr. Money TV, he needs to actually monetize his channel in a way. That's why the, the videos are excellent. The edits, is, you can put it on TV even. Uh, so when you watch this channel, please don't skip the ads that is running on this channel. I know it's very distracting. Some it's, Sometimes it's very uh, annoying for you. I don't know. You know, just watch the ads playing in his channel for 30 seconds or even one minute, right? Even you hate the ads because they probably get paid like, um, I, 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 I'm not sure, uh, maybe, you know, a few, a few dollars, you know, every day or whatnot, you know, just to thank them for really um, uh, making these really good videos to actually start off and you know uh, awaken you uh, your awareness uh, it will make the entire ecosystem better you know financial education and all that so uh even again, mr money tv is actually watching you know good job you know you, you just really want to focus on making more more better better video more people watch mr money channel you know which by the way has a bigger audience than mine and then a small channel like cfu channel uh, will actually have uh, get some views from there you know because uh here's the thing I, I don't try to monetize your attention if you're watching CFU channel, unlike, you know, many other channels, something like that, you know, but I, I have, I'm cool with that, right? Some people need to monetize their channel because that's how they make their living. But no, that is not how we make our living in a CFU channel because every single week, I took some time to actually publish this video, but our core business and core revenue actually come from in the trenches advising client, which you can see there's uh, so many testimonials of our one-on-one -on -one clients over, uh, over here. But remember this, right? If you're a medical professional, you're busy enough. If you really want good advice, right? Not that what your peers are doing. Your peers, what they are doing, they, they are coming for, they are looking for independent advisor because they want direct actionable advice. You know, they want to solve a specific problem. They don't want to go to YouTube and Google and, and you know, go to Laoyat or whatnot, uh, Laoyat forum. To, they don't want an opinion. They want uh, actionable advice that works. What can get you ahead? It's not fluff, right? Which is why if you see some of the comments that I always get every single week, uh, which by the way, they become our client eventually. If you see a comment some from someone like this, there are too many investment noises around, you know, watching this channel, YouTube and all that. They, they, they get more confused, right? In, in today's age, it is not about the lack of information to understand. It's about too much information until you cannot really separate or filter between what is good and what is bad and what is useful for me and what is not useful for me. You know, like this guy said, you know, you know, his own un misunderstanding and then he, he between try stock market, he's try unit trust, people say don't go for unit trust. They try stash away, you know, and but you know what short term forex trading? He said there are so many advice around that he's confused and um, you know he, he just are uh, stuck so when it comes to us we are a professional advisor who are non-biased with full knowledge of ongoing investment tools in malaysia and most importantly someone i feel are like the key to my financial plan now it's not what i say that's what he said right because he, he follow our work obviously and you know what are the thing that uh, the kind of angle we could actually help him now like i say uh if mr money TV, you are watching this please bear in mind i'm not your competitor because i do not monetize my channel right so it means that actually google earns zero from me i also earn zero lah, from the channel right but if you look at Compare these two channels, right? Uh, one of the team member actually very social media savvy. Actually, send me, you know, they actually have these uh, tools to analyze the channel. Then I will say, Alama, you know, a uh, channel like Mr. Money, they got B, B minus, uh, and then where I got a C plus. And it's not like getting a C in your test or exam. Oh my god, it's so sad, right? And actually, 20 years back, I used to be a straight A, uh, 10 A1 uh, student in my SPF. For me to actually get a C plus over here in my channel, probably because of the fugly presentation slide that I'm doing over here, uh, you know, it just, just, I think my mom is going to kill me for that because I got a C plus, right? My parents going to whack me, right? Even though now I'm married, I'm a father, right? But seriously, why I do not monetize my channel now? Even you know, even though okay, let, let me check something like that. If you were to check my channel over here, um, you know, this 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 two actually tells you like what are the the estimated earnings. Actually, this is not true because they say every day I'm expect based on my audience size and what video views we I'm expecting. If I were to monetize my channel, I would probably get paid like what twenty cents to three dollars a day. But for me, because we don't monetize our channel, so. I got paid zero for that. But let's look at, you know, channel like um, Mr. Money TV, right? Which is pretty interesting. See what these, these two actually say, right? Um, okay, okay, this, this is pretty interesting, right? Let me actually put this ring to front, okay. So this is pretty interesting because according to this tool, this YouTube summary every day, a channel like Mr. Money TV, about 10,000 views, 20,000 views per day. So uh, by you supporting his channel, he probably get paid $3 a day to up to $41, you know, uh, a day. On a monthly basis, probably around, you know, a wide, very wide range over here, uh, 40 to about 600 seven hundred dollars which is about probably about two thousand ringgit so please support channel like mr money tv because obviously that is the main monetization method now i do not monetize it that way in my youtube channel it's because if i enable monetization company shady investment products or platform like um, i don't want to mention the names over here right but they they actually run ads on google we have seen that enough right so other platform can actually run ads on 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 a channel that is that has enabled monetization like mr money tv so if i do not enable that no 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 other company can run ads on my channel as you are watching my videos right so there's a lot of like forex trading platform and all that now for imagine you suddenly watching my video then in the middle of the video suddenly this example this eToro kind of uh, ad or any forex trading platform actually pops up and then you might have thought hey how come this is uh this is recommended by CF Liu, is it? And then you might thought that is my direct endorsement of this kind of uh platform. 
some of them are really operating in a gray area or maybe not even licensed by the regulator in Malaysia, right? And I don't want to be associated with that. Even though I have no control, like any YouTuber that runs a YouTube channel have no control over what company or what kind of ads they could that will appear as you watch their, their channel just to be just to be true to you, right? But you, know, you have no control. So if you look at Money, Mr. Money TV and then you see there's some ads running on this channel, there's no control of what kind of ads, but I just don't want to be associated with that. Now, if again, this is a, a difference of principle. For me, I would not abuse and misuse your trust. That's why I rather not earn probably like if I were to monetize it, probably I can earn one or two thousand per month for that ringgit. But you know, that is not how I monetize. I would rather actually uh, charge you a fee for solving your exact problem right, rather than running ads on my channel. And you have to understand, you know, some some platforms that is very popular, just because it's popular doesn't mean necessarily they are 100% legit. Now, I'm not saying that eToro is not legit. It's just that at the time of this recording, Security Commission of Malaysia back in May 2020 has said that eToro is not a license, it's not, a li it's not licensed and registered for regulated activity in Malaysia. And you can see that if you go to Mr. Money TV, he not only have one, not only two, but three, at least three videos that is permanently live, that is directly promoting eToro prominently. Now, I don't judge people based on what they want to do, right? It's not my problem. But the fact is, my problem is as a regulator and a certified and licensed professional, for me, this is not okay. And I don't want to be associated with that, okay? I'm not even okay with uh, one minute ads running on my channel, let's say for eToro, which obviously Security Commission said is not licensed entities on Security Commission watch list, right? Not blacklist yet, but watch list. But I would really never want to do something like that because it might get me into trouble. And if you lose money, you might blame me for it. Right. Let's say if it's alright suddenly, you don't want to retrieve your money, it's just like go bust, right? And your money is halfway around the world, even though it's regulated in Cyprus and UK and all that. But the point being is you are a Malaysian. If you are a medical professional, imagine if this shit happens. You are not talking about return. What is the return of investment? Nah? No. You are talking about return of your capital. You know, your capital could be gone. And as a business professional, you don't have time to go to the sue the company, Toro and all that, quite to repatriate your money. You don't want that kind of trouble, right? So you just want the straightforward regulated kind of thing. So sometimes when we see on social media channel, you know, it, sometimes it gets misleading. Just because it's popular, don't think it is 100% legit. So, this is some of the closing words I have for you if you're a medical professional, right? And excuse my very ugly, fugly PowerPoint style and my handwriting. Don't judge me on my handwriting because, you know, if you're a doctor, you know yours one is probably worse than mine, okay? <laughs> Jokes aside, let's come back to this. As a medical professional, this is how you win in life. If you're a medical professional, likely you want to be continue to be a medical professional, doctor, surgeon, or whatnot, you either do not return to Malaysia, which means that you would not get underpaid. Because you return to Malaysia, you would spend the first five years, half a decade or decade of your life in the public government sector. It's probably, you know, over, uh, overworked and underpaid. So this is your option. Your second option is if you are going to work in Malaysia, you're going to stay in Malaysia, you can do two things. One is that you are 50-50. Uh, what I mean by 50-50, which means that you could be a GP and you spend 50% of your time in, you know, whether you're operating a clinic for yourself or for others, working for others, and then you spend the other 50% of your time dabbling in stocks, investment, properties, and all that. So you divide attention 50-50. The problem is 98% of people are sitting on 50-50 their whole fucking life, which means they're zero-zero. So when you're 50-50, you get one day, and anything else is you're just fucking sitting and bullshitting. So fucking flip a coin to pick the one and never look back. The other option is you are 100% laser focused on what you do. And likely these are the group of kinds that we see mostly when they are specialists, right? They, they probably have to spend like years to be certified to get that specialization. Okay, so they focus on being a specialist. And then, right, and then what are their approach in investment? Street investment is important as something like your side venture, right? Your side venture. And when you do that, you only focus on, again, when it comes to investment, your area of competency, which is like what I show you, those medical healthcare companies, which you already know, you already know the fundamentals, they're only for you to go for value investing class, how to analyze the company, because you probably know better than all those uh, value investing trainers that are trying to teach you how to analyze the account and all that. No, you don't need that, probably. You don't need that. Operate within your area of competency. This is your side thing. It's not your main thing. Your main thing that makes you money is being a specialist. The side thing is whatever money you have, you just plant into healthcare stocks, maybe a global healthcare fund. This is what we are doing for our clients, right? And then if you like property, you don't need to actually invest into property. You can actually invest globally instead of property, you know, in Selangor, JB and Penang in the way of a REIT, which is very liquid. You know, when you invest into REIT, you're exposed to not only residential, but mostly commercial property used for businesses around the world in US, Japan, whatever Asia Pacific countries. And I have a lesson on this uh, REIT investment focused on commercial property around the world. You just check out what is popping up on the upper right-hand corner, right? Your fast track lesson. So if you want to go global, then probably you have to go for some global REIT funds. We do this part for our medical professional clients. Right, you go global and then you just focus on that. And likely, as you, I can show you over here, this is your earning curve as a GP. Right? When it comes to your earning power, you have to go by the volume, right? 
especially um, especially when you know you open your own clinic, you have to go by volume because you cannot really charge a lot per patient. And I remember one of my doctor clients, runs a GP clinic, uh, you know, uh, told me that if in today's uh, environment, if your clinic is not a panel clinic for all those big companies like banks, like TNB, uh, or all those US multinational company, basically your your business will be just like that, lor, right? Because if you're not a panel of of some big companies, normally you know people who are working in this company, big companies, they will have like a medical or outpatient uh, GP card that they will only go to those panel company when they walk in, they show their medical card for GP consultation, and then they not don't need to pay a single cent because the clinics will actually make the claims right back to the whoever the insurance company that covers the staff for that company. So, so so that is the game that you need to play, the volume game, and. Uh, and the other thing is, this Dr. Khan also used to tell me, when you first started out, it's so hard to actually be a panel of those companies. Imagine you are a highly regarded doctor. You still need to literally back and persuade the HR of all these big companies so that your clinic would be included as their panel. Can you imagine that? Because this doctor tell me when first he actually um, he actually uh, opens his own clinic, approach a big company, the big company will ask him, Hey doctor, you know, company kita sudah ada banyak, banyak panel clinic. You punya clinic nak jadi panel apa special? You know, just, just, just imagine, right? You you know, that, that is the thing. If you are a GP, you're starting out, that's the thing that you're going to get. And there's a lingo, right? There's a lingo between uh, doctors, I mean, uh, there's a certain group. Normally, when they try to dabble into stock market, and they don't know what they're doing. They just, you know, you know, invest based on hearsay or what is hot, you know, based on tips. And then, boom, when they lose money, and then they go to the gathering. Or, or you know, they go and yam cha. And the doctor tell me there's a, this insider kind of speech. They say, hey, how are you? And the doctor say, yeah, no good. Lah. And the other doctor say, why no good? Well, because uh, because I just, last week, I just, uh, my stock, I just lost an S class. <laughs> what is S class? Or miss this, lah, no? or C class or whatnot. Which means that that is their lingo to tell, to admit, to confess that actually lose maybe 200,000, 300,000, depending on what is the value of their losses, equivalent to they lost like a car, like Mercedes or BMW equivalent of value, right? Which is really funny, right? So 100% focus, if you're a doctor, right? It means that you have to have a very strong delay gratification. Now, I know it's not hard, not easy to do, but here's the thing, right? When everyone, when you're starting up in your late 20s, when everyone is already driving Honda City, you are still driving a MyV because you still work in a government sector, right? But in five or 10 years time, right? You get to drive the car of your dream, whether it's a Mercedes S car, whether it's BMW 7 Series, whether it's Porsche, whether it's a Lexus, or even a Lamborghini or Ferrari, you know, when others are actually only driving Honda Accord or Toyota Camry. So that is the kind of advantage, right? You could be a, a slow starter, but when you really become more experienced, you really can practice delay gratification, you really focus on what you do best, the rewards financially, I think will come. And that is not because, this is what we see from all our clients, right? That is what we see. And you know, if you're not that level yet, you know, this is the truth for you, right? The fact is investment alone, investment. A lot of people have this misconception, right? I mean, investment, when I, I'm a doctor, I, I make some income, I invest in property, that property is going to make me rich, right? Here's the opener for you. Here's the enlightenment for you. Investing in property wouldn't make you rich. Rich people don't invest in property to get rich because they are investing their time, effort, and money into their business. And then whatever money generated from that, they park their money in properties. If you don't believe me, just check out this video I have for you. The wealthiest people in this country have not made their money through property. The wealthiest people in this country park their money in property once they've made it in their business. And the more cash flow you can produce in the business, the more valuable that business becomes. But what a lot of people do is they go, oh, I've got to invest in property because that's how you make money. And they get every single fucking cent they can out of their business and they pull it out and they put it straight into property. And these properties are going, business is like sitting there going, oh, begging for fucking oxygen to grow but they don't have any because you're sucking all the oxygen out and feeding into these fat fucking things sitting on a fucking curb. <laughs> That's the truth. You want to get wealthy in this country? Fucking invest in your business. Put the money into your business. That's how money is made. That's how real money is made. And if you still don't believe me, you know, I could actually share with you a case study whereby one of my clients actually in, invested in property for six years, you know, about half a million, seems like this hundred over thousand of capital gain. But then actually we dissect that and this is the same amount of money, uh, amount of money like, you know, after net of loans and all that. It's like no better than putting your money in fixed deposit. And you might wonder, Leo, what am I talking about? Now, I really cannot explain that further in this video because it's too long already. But if you want to know why this happened, click, you know, check out the description below, leave your comments and I'll send you more extra information. And when we actually post this in our Facebook platform, someone just, someone out of the blue just say, but the, the name of Sia, compounding return and flexibility to move your investment in a smaller amount gives better return than property. And then we actually reply him, super love and agree with your philosophy. I guess you learned it the hard way over the years. Then he say, yes. So you, you might not believe what I'm saying over here, but we have seen enough cases 
right? That actually says that, hey, do this, but don't do that. And this is the advice. If you're a medical professional, this is the advice I have for you. Now, last thing, that final thing I want to tell you is that because you are busy, you, you probably don't have time to actually seek for too many things outside of your circle of competency, which is in the medical field, right? Please, please, please do not ever try to venture out to invest into something that you don't really know unless someone like myself can actually fit your information. Complicated stuff compressed into something that I could actually explain and be understood by seven years. Okay, otherwise, anything that you cannot understand, you cannot really explain it better to another one, do not invest because this is what you get, right? This is some of the circle that's not... Uh, okay, I want to share this with you, right? This is mostly where you make your biggest mistake. So this is your circle of competence of COC, what you really know, your safety zone. Because sometimes you need to grow to in order to acquire new knowledge to you for to grow personally. So do that in, in your spare time, yes, but don't put big money into it. Because what you thought you know over here, what you think you know often is what you don't know what you don't know. This is the green zone over here and most big mistakes are here. It is called what you call as a danger zone because you are never sure here but you often venture it out here again because you don't know that you don't know and often lead, uh, led by the envy of others doing well, right? Look at people like, wow, please stop, ah, very profitable, right? I'm a doctor, I know time I also want to play, right? And overconfidence that you do well too, so don't fall into that. I know you are very smart as a medical professional but don't be overconfident because that will lead to your downfall or financial loss, right? And everything else is what you know you don't know. It's safety zone because you know you will not venture here. You see that? The green zone is actually much much bigger than the red zone right so how to how to grow your circle of competence you read 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 be a learning machine but i know your time is short so if you really find this useful you check out our facebook or youtube channel wherever you're watching this video follow and like because with the heart of educator i'm coming to you with kindness and you know and, and knowledge so that i add value to you first no charge and this is what i have to say my message to you learn from the mistake of others when you're ready some doctors are actually only come to us after they reach a certain stage because they know that they want to shortcut they are they don't want to make learn from the mistake if they can learn from the mistake of others it'll prevent them from making a mistake on their own right and prevent this what we call a costly mistake if you don't mind you don't have to engage us you don't have to come to us for proper advice it just means that you are going to pay for your own mistake you know we call that a tuition fees anyway and uh be curious ask questions but the problem is sometimes is if this is not in your field of competency i could understand that you don't even know what to ask you just take in that uh, don't know even what to ask right so therefore Follow CFD channel, like and subscribe. So at least you get the awareness, you know, whether you become a client eventually or not, doesn't really matter. I hope I do my part to add value to you. So you just um, follow the CFD channel and really get educated awareness. So at least you can ask a better question, like something bankers or the agent might be actually hiding from you, right? For us, we are very transparent, right? Even sometimes you don't ask, if you are a client, we will tell you, this is the bad thing, this is a good thing. There are no, no things are 100% perfect one, right? It's basically about every decision, financial decision like, like as well, there's a pros, there are cons, right? I hope, I hope really you get some really good insights from here. And again, final thing is I want you to check out another video that I have done earlier. I know that a lot of doctors are sitting in the office, a lot of insurance agents like to approach them to sell savings plan. And then my package or show you the savings plan or pitch you the savings plan is like two times, three times better than 50 policy with very low risk. But actually it's bad. But I, I'm not able to tell you why unless you click on what is in the upper right hand corner of this video or comments below we'll send you another free lesson in our YouTube channel specifically on why you really should avoid those insurance savings plans because I'm again being very analytical and dissect for you why I think saving plan would not really contribute positively to your to your to growing your wealth or your wealth accumulation. So that being said, I hope this lesson has been useful again. If you like, find it useful, like and subscribe, save your channel. And uh Comments below if you have uh, anything. Um, if you are still skeptical of this, just look at what other people already have to say about the work I do in this channel and, you know, the one the things that I share for so many years. Okay, I wish you a good day and uh, I'll see you in another lesson.